Dear Chair, dear audience, thanks a lot for the opportunity for this talk. Cartilage damage is uh, frequently found during arthroscopy and um, can sometimes lead to pain and reduce quality of life. The natural cause is progression. Progression towards osteoarthritis and an important number of the adult population, 6% have clinically significant knee osteoarthritis. So there are different techniques to um, treat focal um, cartilage defects, but none of these is um, valid for osteoarthritis. So these can work in mild degenerative changes, but it's no solution yet for osteoarthritis. One problem can be the um, deterioration of quality of cells with age. We see that the chondrocytes lose potency with increasing age, and we have a high failure rate with increasing age with these um, cartilage repair techniques. So what can be improved? I'd like to introduce the nose to knee approach. This means to take a cartilage biopsy, not from the articular joint, but from the nasal septal cartilage. In this histology, you can see it is also a high line cartilage. So it's the same entity, the same anatomy of cartilage like um, we find in the articular joint. We investigated several um, topics with regard to the nasal chondrocytes. So nasal chondrocytes in the nose normally do not produce hyaluronic acid, lubricine, but if you compress these cells, they start to produce hyaluronic acid and lubricine. So you can nicely see here. So these cells can adapt to a joint environment with uh, mechanical forces. We also investigated the response to inflammatory exposure because this is really important in an injured joint or in an osteoarthritic joint. And we can see that the nasal chondrocytes really nicely recover from inflammatory exposure and strongly more than articular chondrocytes do. Here you see the, the deterioration of the quality of the chondrocytes and of the cartilage produced with increasing age. So in young patients, we still find a good um, glycosaminoglycan production, but with increasing age, in the age of um, 70, um, the potency of the cells is really bad. But if you compare to nasal chondrocytes, even with 74 years of age, the potency of cells is excellent. So it's like the cells of a young patient. Yes. We also did preclinical testing, so we um, implanted nasal um, tissue into knee joints of um, sheep, and we found that um, nasal chondrocytes perform better than um, articular chondrocytes. And we found also these cells after six months in the repair tissue, indicating that they contribute to the repair tissue. So we um, addressed several preclinical aspects. And finally, we can conclude the advantages, the possible advantages of using nasal chondrocytes instead of articular chondrocytes is uh, properties less age dependent. They can be easily harvested from the nasal septum. It's a procedure like at the dentist and local anesthesia. They have a higher resilience towards inflammatory environment. They perform really well in the laboratory and they can adapt to a joint environment. So this is the manufacturing process. We take a biopsy of um, several millimeter of the nasal septal cartilage. And this is the product which is produced after four weeks of production. So the cells are isolated, expanded, and seeded on a collagen membrane. And um, after four weeks, we receive a nice graft. I'd like to show you in histology what is really the difference. These are Macy, Hylograft, Carus, Novocard. All these are matrices of collagen, and they just have cells inside. You can see little spots of cells. And the nasal construct, this is really a tissue. So you have the cells and they produce their own matrix. So really transplant a major tissue. This is a severe difference. I'd like to start the video. So to show you how the graph looks like, can be perfectly handled in the operation theater. You can cut it with scissors or knife and trim it to your desired defect and you can implant it. 
we did a phase one study to prove the concept. And what we've seen is um, safe, feasible, and um, significant clinical benefit. Very interestingly, we've seen um, full um, cartilage repair, so full filling of the defect. And we've seen that the um, composition of glycosaminoglycans is similar to the native cartilage. So we achieve a very, a, a repair tissue very rich in um, cartilage proteins. We also did a phase two trial where we've seen the efficacy of this treatment so the patients can um, importantly benefit and also in revision cases, in difficult revision cases, we um, see important and um, significant benefit and um, no deterioration if compared to non-revision surgeries. So now we want to go further. We want to extend towards challenging indications. We can produce these cartilage grafts in almost any size and big sizes which are sufficient to resurface a full joint facet. So a, a first, first step is treating um, a first osteoarthritic indication, patellofemoral osteoarthritis, because it's quite easy to address from a surgical point of view. Patellofemoral osteoarthritis um, accounts for 16% of the isolated, the isolated patellofemoral osteoarthritis with regard to total um, knee osteoarthritis and main cause is um, instability or trauma. We also did a preclinical testing in a sheep model, and what we could see in patellofemoral kissing lesions in sheep model is a very nice healing of the defect after um, six months. So the cartilage defects are macroscopically very nicely healed, and also the histological grading was pretty good. So we extended to clinical patients, and this was a first kissing lesion patient, already had prior surgery with a bone marrow stimulation, which failed, and um, the, um, you can see the empty defect on the MRI of the trochlea and of the patella, and we transplanted the tissue. Here you see the patella um, and um, the trochlea um, with the implanted graft in the challenging kissing lesion. And um, already after three months, you see a um, full defect filling of the, um, with the repair tissue, and after 12 months, still stable, full defect filling. The patient had um, important clinical benefit from this procedure. So we went further, and um, it's the first patient with a really fully degenerated um, patella. See the full um, degeneration of the um, um, patella facet, and um, what we did is um, to debride all the broken cartilage and in, um, implant the um, graft, almost um, resurfacing the full um, patella. And you see the MRI after surgery; it's three months after surgery. It's already a fully reconstructed. Um, facet of the patella still joint diffusion, but um, the nasal chondrocytes are capable in an osteoarthritic environment to um, produce a, a thick cartilage repair tissue, and um, this is um, this is very novel because in the standard treatments you mostly do not see any repair tissue, or then the repair tissue is only um, thin, and this is really working. The, the advantages might be the potency of these cells but also the way of transplanting a full tissue which has a certain primary stability if compared to transplanting only cells. With the first um, loading, the cells are somehow um, scratched away and um, cannot resist this mechanical impact. So we treated now four patients so far and um, no complications so far, but it's quite early. So the first patient already reached the one-year follow-up and um, has a very, very nice um, clinical benefit. You can see the CUS score here in this um, table and um, increased um, um, to a very excellent clinical outcome after one year. Of course, we need to see <coughs> the um, clinical course of the other patients, and also we need to confirm these early observations in a bigger, um, better quality trial. So we are right now preparing for a randomized multicenter trial to compare the um, tissue engineering approach with standard treatments, like um, either conservative treatment or prosthesis or other 
cartridge repair techniques. We also want to go further. So this is a repair procedure for cartilage only. Of course, if we see bone changes, bone marrow edema, sclerosis, we have to address this, and we, we can drill the bone, we can reduce sclerosis subchondrally, um, and implant the cartilage graft. But then the future step would even be to have also a bone phase for this end graft. So to engineer a full osteochondral graft, like you can see it here in our first uh, preclinical testings. So we have a, um, a ceramic um, scaffold, or a 3D printed scaffold, and where we engineer the cartilage on top. And um, this is just like a mushroom shape. It's a, um, it's a first test. It's only one centimeter. But the um, future goal might be to be inspired by um, prosthesis, metal prosthesis, and to engineer like a wave prosthesis. To, um, and in, in principle, this is possible. It just needs to be developed and proved in clinical setting. So I'd like to conclude. <coughs> um, we, we demonstrated feasibility and the efficacy of um, or preliminary efficacy of treating patellofemoral osteoarthritis with these engineered nasal cartilage graft. And in the future, we expect the combination of bone phase with the cartilage phase to engineer bioprosthesis or osteochondral grafts and um, to uh, improve the treatment of um, osteoarthritis. I'd like to thank my team in Basel and you for your attention. Thank you.